Welcome to another My Outlander Purgatory Recap. This week, we continue our Season 6 coverage with a recap of Episode 606, The World Turned Upside Down. Ready? Then pour yourself a wee dram, settle in, and let's do this. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy. I'm Carol. And we are my... Outlander. Purgatory. Ta-ta. Boy, oh boy, I know somebody who's going to be in purgatory today. <laughs> and it's not either one of us, but we'll get there. Carol, how are you this I, evening? I, I am afraid. I'm afraid. I'm closing out everything, and all I have is my notes, which I forgot to open. Um, I am afraid to have this discussion, but I will say something very interesting. My notes this week are a quarter of the size they've been the last two weeks. I think it's just because it was so, this was a very intense, serious episode and I just wasn't cracking jokes left and right. You know know what I mean? I know. So I don't think I'm going to have as much. I have plenty to say, but at the same time, I don't have as much to say as I've had the past couple of weeks. Um, What are you drinking? (laughs) Matua. Oh, Carol, Carol, like you can mark the seasons of Outlander according to what what wine Carol drinks throughout the recaps that season. But it is really weird that I'm drinking this. I know I'm weird. Like, I, you know what it is? I'm not weird. I'm lazy. This is one of those ones that I love. It tastes amazing. And I don't get a headache. And it's lighter even than a Pinot. I switched from Chardonnay to Pinot because the Pinot was the Pinot Grigio was lighter. But then I switched to the Sauvignon Blanc because it's so crisp and light and a little grapefruity. Which is something you would drink in, you know, like July. But here's me. I just drink it all year long. So I'm just lazy. I really need to. You know what? I just want to go and do some type of wine tasting. I did a couple in the fall. I'm in a wine club. I'm in a wine club. You know what? I don't want to be in a wine club. I want to go to the winery. You know, we go to this little winery in, um, gosh, what town is that in? Have you ever been to Lorita? I think so. Uh, and it's just, I have the best time. You just sit up and you have your little fleet and you have your little, you know, it's just a good time. And, and you so eat a little, have a little. Like, I don't really care about the wines. It's just fun to sit around and drink them. It is, but it's gorgeous. And, and you have, it's very rustic and they bring you your little cheese and cheese plate. And, you know, I, that's what I would rather do and have somebody, which I, like I said, I did it, but I still don't know what I'm doing. You guys, if anybody knows about wine, just let me know. I'm the same way with foods like I hate when you go to a really good restaurant you're like I don't know if it's like a different type of food that you're not used to like okay like how much do I wax on about the Korean shows I watch well a new Korean show um restaurant just opened in Asbury Park and I want to go and I don't know what to order because I don't know what I like so I would love to go and have them put a little of this and a little of this and a little of this and I think restaurants and restaurants in general should just do that more often all right I'll shut up I am so rambling um, my God. Korean restaurant. Did somebody just give me um caffeine? Because I'm rambling like a spaz. <laughs> and you guys, I just have one more thing to say. I told Tracy that I look like the guy from Night Ranger tonight. This practically looks like a bi level. Okay. Yeah. And coincidentally, I look like Clara two months after um Mrs. Bug and Malva <laughs> shaved her head. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching this tonight. I'm watching this, you guys, and I, I get halfway through the episode and I'm like, oh my. God, did Tracy cut her hair to coincide with Claire? I'm like, what? What? Did Tracy sit here and think in her head, all right, is it going to be episode five or episode six? You know you did. I know you did. Well, we weren't even sure they were going to do the hair. I feel like, I, you know, I've been cutting this shit out of these videos because they're so long. And like this cut whole my, conversation. Cut right this whole conversation out. You cut um, it. But, but I will say that we did talk about this at one point. And you were like, I don't think they're going to do it. Or are they going to mm-hmm. do it? And I was like, I'm not making any bets anymore because I Fully didn't think they were going to do Christian. I didn't think they were going to do, um, I don't even remember what. Um, yeah. I don't even remember what. And boom, Fully boom, admit boom, it. They did it all. Did Fully it admit all. it. So. Fully admit. I was like, no, they're not going to do that. They did it. And I love, well, we're, we'll get to it, but I loved how they did it. I love that, you know, you sort of pan okay, from okay, Roger. Okay, okay, no, no. Yeah, but, wait, wait, don't right. be, we're, Well, we're I, I will talk about, like, all right, here's what I'm, just a really quick one I'm drinking, which is this Mayu, um, it's a Chilean wine, and it's um, a Pedro Jimenez. I don't, 
I don't really know. I think it's just a white wine. I don't know if Pedro is the brand is the, the brand or the um, logo. I don't know. I don't know what, but it's Chris. I, I want to know so. if you said that correctly. Pedro Jimenez. Yes. Here's what it, here's what it, here's what it is. You guys, I don't have a ring light. So that's why, um, I, cause I got that for my birthday. So that's why it's I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah. Um, Jimenez, Jimenez, Jimenez. I don't know. It's good. That's all I, that's all I can say. Um, and I don't know, since we've gotten all that out of the way and there's so much to talk about with this episode, shall we get started? Yes, please. Dear, dear Lord. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. All right. So, um, the episode is called The World Turned Upside Down. Hell I yeah, figured dude. when we saw that, you know, when you see the title um, or when you hear about it, I was like, okay, so they're really getting into Revolutionary War stuff now. They're really just like going for broke. So it's called The World Turned Upside Down. It's episode 606. The writer is Tony Graffia, who has been writing for Outlander forever. And we love her. And she's great. And she writes fantastic episodes. Except for this one where she basically just took the book back there and was like, Hmm, that's a good line. I'll throw it in here. Hmm, that's a good, that's another great line. Let's put it Loved in. It. Loved it. Here, so... um, <laughs> uh, Sam, Kat, just like, like read this chapter and just say it. Like <laughs> I love when it comes straight from the book. Although I have to say, you guys, is your memory as bad as mine? Because I was riveted. I was on the edge of my seat. And then I was like, wait. I know this. I've read this. Like, did this really happen? I could not remember. The mo- the climax of the show, I could not remember if it happened in the books. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'll, and I have something written down that you will remember. You will remember it. Okay. So we open, um, we do have a cold open. Um, Roger is giving um, a sermon or a homily or whatever you call it when you're in the Presbyterian church. Um, and he's doing a really good job. He's very commanding the room. Everyone's kind of riveted. Jamie and Claire are looking all cute. They're all holding hands at church. They're super cute. Tom Christie kind of notices. And, you know, he doesn't, I, I don't think he thinks kindly to showing PDA in church. Right. Ms. Mistress Fraser. Right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so we're leaving the church and, they're all, you know, even... Roger, <laughs> Roger gets a compliment from Jamie, which is high praise. And meanwhile, they're like, you know, where are the McNeils? Um, we haven't seen them around, whatever. Like, oh, we should go check up on them. And we also find out the big deal, the big news we find out here is that Marsley and Fergus and the Beans are gone. They're in the burn. Oh, no. so I sad. Know. I know. I know. Um, do you think we'll see them again the rest of the season? Seeing as we only have two episodes left? Yes. No. I'm going to say yes just because I want to see them again. Well, actually, no. Because I was thinking, remember Jamie was going to New Bern? Mm-hmm. And, and, but what am I kidding? They already, not only did they go to New Bern, they also went to Philadelphia. So, no. I, 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 <clears throat> I shouldn't say no. I don't know. I don't Wait, know. Jamie didn't go to Philadelphia in this episode. I thought that was the whole thing about the Continental Congress and they don't want No, it. no, he went to New Bern and they were choosing, I guess, North Carolina delegates for the Continental Congress. To go to Philadelphia. To go to Philadelphia. But Jamie didn't make it, remember? He didn't He didn't make it, but I thought he went to, all the way to Philadelphia and didn't make it because her hair grew so much. No, he wasn't gone for two months, though. He was gone for like, I don't know, a week, 10 days. Okay, so, okay. Then they were just- Just time just went on. Just time just went by. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So they go to the McNeil house and there's crows everywhere. And, um, and as our friends were, hang on a minute, you forgot to mention the part where Pa and Ma and Mary and Laura all came out of church. I did. I just mentioned that. And then they talk about the McNeil, they talk about the Edwards and where are they? It was so totally the angles. It wasn't even funny in that know, church really scene was. today. It was, it was, we've gotten a lot of angles this season. Some people don't like it. In fact, some people are complaining that it's very little house on the prairie. I happen to love little house on the prairie. So I'm never going to complain about that. Well, what that's you know, <coughs> like, it's the way it I mean, was. it's kind of like, yeah, they're in know? the middle of nowhere coming out of a church and everyone in town is there that somebody built with their own two hands. Right. Um, I do have a question though, because you're like, because you did say everyone, <clears throat> everyone in town is there. 
Um, and this sort of applies to like later in the episode, but like, are the Fisher folk the only people living on the ridge now? Oh my God. I can't even keep them straight. Later in the episode, Jamie's like, oh, she's telling her who died. Oh, this one, that one, three of the Fisher folk. And I'm like, I don't even remember who the Fisher folk are. I just felt like, and I, I'm skipping ahead, sorry, but like once everything starts to go down <clears throat> with Jamie and like people, like, you know, the rumors and whatever, right. like I'm just thinking, okay, the Fisher folk are a small population of the Ridge and there's all these other like arts, like arts mirror guys, you know, what about your, your, um, your, uh, what's his name? Um, Hughes and your, uh, I don't know, all these other people from Archmere and, you know, it's McDo. They're they're not going to like turn their backs on McDo. They're not going to like gossip against them. But McDo. they seem to not be around anymore. And it's just the fish folk that are being all like, you know, uh, I saw Jamie Fraser with the devil or whatever. Oh, for God's sake! I know <clears throat> it's a little weird. It was that I questioned that. Like, where's everyone else going? You know, whatever. Okay, so yeah, um, so there's crows all over the house. And you know it's never a good thing because we watch Shit's Creek and Moira Rose knows the crows have eyes. <laughs> that is so funny. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I mean, the minute they're, you know, how many yards from the house and already like, I know, I like something's really smelly. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. And you have a million crows in the house. It's you guys. This isn't gonna be good. Like yeah. maybe somebody wants to run back and get Jamie because yeah. um, this is not gonna be good. Mm-mm. And it's not good. In fact, no. it's very, very bad. No. They go in. It's stinky. But it wasn't dead stink. Like at <clears> no, first, it was, I, it was fr- bloody flux stink. At first, I was gonna. I was thinking it was gonna be like dead stink. But then I was like, oh, no, it stanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's bloody flux. It's bloody it's, flux. Yeah. Now, all right, we have to go here. I'm assuming the bloody flux is only coming out of one end. Yeah. Correct? Downtown. Okay. okay. Yes. Wait, did they say bloody flux? Bloody flux. Is yeah. that? I wasn't thinking it was bloody. I just thought it was like disgusting diarrhea. No, they said bloody flux. <clears throat> and I remember that from the um from the books too. It's bloody flux. Because I was like, like when you're reading it, you don't really know how to pronounce stuff because you're reading it. And I was like, is that just like a weird, the weird 18th century way of spelling flu? But now it's flux. It's actually flux for that. Yuck. Um, okay, so it's the bloody flux. There's so many people in that cabin. I okay. There's Mr. McNeil, there's Mrs. McNeil. There's two like 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 oldery, not old that old, but like you know five years old, seven years old, something like that. Right, kids, right, and right. there's a baby. Do yes. I have everybody? Yes. Or were there more? As, as far as I could see, there were five of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. So by the end, when we start the credits, the baby has died. Mrs. Mm-hmm. has died. I kind of think maybe the little daughter died too. The one oh. whoever was Lizzie was hanging around with. Oh, Lizzie. Um. I have plenty to say about Lizzie in this scene. And, <clears throat> yeah. So, I mean, it's awful. Clearly something is wrong. Um, I, I, I did feel for Claire, speaking of Lizzie, I did feel for Claire because Claire's like cursing up, up a storm. What do you and, think I'm pissed off at Lizzie for? And Lizzie's all like, you know, you know, mistress, all the curse again. I'm like, oh, Claire, I know. Cause like people in the comments tell me that too, my curse. So, Claire, you're seen. You're seen by me, okay? See you. All, see you, and I feel you. That's all I can really say, hard the curse. I have, you know, the mother and the baby can't even drink water, and all Lizzie can do is bitch at Claire for cursing, and I did not take kindly to that. Because, you know what, Lizzie, just pipe the frick down, okay? Number one. Number two, and, and she's all like, oh, you know, this should, we should be taught, whatever she said, I don't know, something about you know, um, <clears throat> the Lord or something. And then I'm like, and speak <clears throat> to Claire like that. Okay. The only people who are allowed to speak about Claire like that is you, me, and Tom. <laughs> if it's not and about Claire, well. it ain't not about there. Claire, it ain't there. So I said, I appreciate Lizzie wanting to pray, but right now is the time for science and medicine. So step off Lizzie. Oh, I was so annoyed. I think Lizzie was just being like Patsy, um, our mom, who one time 
We were all in, a, in our in the car. What's coming? Driving. I'm afraid. I'm afraid <laughs> what she's about to say. <laughs> We were all driving to like, you know, go spend Thanksgiving at my father's family, which is like six hours away. We're all in the car, whatever. And it's dark and it's rainy and whatever. And my dad just like, I don't know if he like swerved to not to hit something, but like we literally go over this embankment, right? <laughs> and you can see we're, we're going to like, I don't know what's, I mean, it wasn't bad. We were, we were fine. The car was fine, whatever. But we, you can see we're like heading off the road. And I go, Jesus Christ. And my mom goes, as we're like flying over the magnet, goes, Tracy, watch your language. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> like, okay, okay. As we're flying to our death, sure, okay. Sorry. Oh my so God. So I did. I felt for, I felt way felt for Claire here. And I was like, you can swear to me, Claire. It's okay. Well, I loved how Claire was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I was like, Claire. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So I sorry, thought Lizzie. she would, you know, I would think Claire would be like, Lizzie. Right now is not the time. <laughs> Need to save these people. Um, all right. So and Lizzie and Lizzie touched her face, and Claire said, "Don't oh, touch her face." Yes, clearly. So I was Lizzie expecting. Never, Lizzie has not lived through COVID like we have, and Claire. Claire lived through the Spanish flu. I'm sure. I was so. expecting Lizzie to come down with it because she touched her face, and I was like. What did Claire tell you not to do? I know. I know. You shouldn't, you, you know, that's all sorts. Of, I mean, there's all sorts of shit over in there. And I'm like, fix me. Literally. Literally here. <laughs> like, you don't want to touch, you don't want to be touching any of that. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So the baby dies and the mother dies. I do, uh, you know, Malva, I think it was Malva that said she wouldn't let a child go alone. And I was just like, oh. And then when we find out later, you know, that Malva is speaking about your child from a place that's a little more than just like speculation. It's even more like cuckoo bird land. Is that what you're talking about? (laughs) Um, All right. So the Easter egg is an elk. I thought that was a good one. Like you don't really guess like what the hell is the elk's about until you finally realize, realize like, Oh, now let me ask you this. So they find out they're like, all right, well, something's gotta be, you know, poison in the water. So we will go find out what it is. I don't think stuff dies in the water all the time. Um, And it doesn't like, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know if they were talking about like big Eric was, Oh, I call it big Eric because I'm Monarch of the Glen. He would be big Eric. Okay. I didn't know if they were talking about, they were all sick because big Eric, the elk was in the water dead or if Big Eric that was in the water dead because of some something that made oh, them all sick. Because he had the bloody flux. Yes. The moose version. Or the I elf don't know. Version. I don't know. You guys, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, I mean, and, I, I... And subscribe, please. And subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, you guys. We've made it so easy. There's a button right there. Okay. Let's Keep going. Let's do it. We'll wait. Did you hit okay. it? <laughs> okay, you did it. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Thank you. You can even like open up a couple of new accounts, like Google accounts, just just to subscribe more. <laughs> can you imagine? We're hot tips on how to like up our subscription numbers coming. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Okay, okay. All right. So Claire has identified the illness. It is amoebic dysentery. I would call it dysentery, but she calls it dysentery, I believe. That's because she's British. That's because she's British. Um, were you getting a little PTSD of the pandemic and everything with all this, like washing your hands and oh, not touching I, your face? And, I was and, like, oh, my God, you guys. Like, are you shameless? Like, you know, you really laid it on thick in this episode to try and be, try and go with the times. Um, there's no cure either. You just have to, like you know poop it out and sleep it off i guess so they're thinking if they find the source they can get rid of it and um you know cut it off at the past and clearly that does not happen because the next scene is in the graveyard there's have been a ton of burials already they're burying somebody else um did you catch this um it made me laugh because we we Missed this last week. Um, Bree goes on the side, like, I wonder where the sin eater is. 
Oh, yeah, no. So I we both missed that when Malva was cutting up some dead dude. Right. We were like, do we, are we supposed to know this dead dude? Well, yes. In fact, the dead dude was the sin eater. Right. No, I did not catch back. that. In our defense, when we watch this, we watch uh, <clears throat> a screener that doesn't have the recap and the, of last week. And right. then when it's on Sundays and we're doing the live tweeting, I'm not paying attention to the recap. You know what I right. mean? Right. So I also stream it. I have um, uh, stars through Hulu. So I don't really know if I, I guess I would get the recap. But, I, you know, depending on what time you sign on to the live TV, I don't know. Right. So so we don't really see like we don't see that they show the Sin Eater um, eat the bread or whatever they showed. Right. From a couple weeks ago. Like, so we didn't, we didn't get it at all, but yeah. My man, the sin eater should have eaten a little bit more bread. I know. And you know what? I was right. That olive oil would have really helped him. (laughs) So it was very funny that Brie was like, I wonder where the sin eater is. Like, when's he going to get here? Um, I just was like, I get that Brie because I found out from last week. Okay. So Claire, of course, is like, what? Sin eater? What? She's she's down. She's down. She's got a fever. Um, she passes out. Jamie sweeps her up. They take her home. They put her in her bed. Um, you know, and then we get a whole big long montage of Claire being sick. And getting sicker and getting sicker and getting sicker. Right. And getting sicker. Um <clears throat> all this is from the book. I have to say, this episode might be. The bookiest episode I think I've ever seen in this show. The whatiest? Bookiest. bookiest. <laughs> I was loving it. I it was so good. This episode was so good, so bookrific. It was so booky that in fact we'll get to a part that I would cut. Because it's like, I'm good. I don't need it. I don't need a book. Right. Um, we have a special guest star, I guess. Not so we, Ian. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, oh my God, it's really tall now. What happened to we, Ian? What happened to we, Ian? He used to be little. Um, yeah, um, but we'll get to that. It's the bookiest episode, the bookiest book episode of, of all time. It was so good. Um, it was so good. Um, you know, Alan shows up. So you were happy. I thought of you every time he showed up, which was quite oh, a few times Alan, in this episode. Alan broke my heart in this episode. Alan's too smart to fall for Malva's nonsense. Malva was so interesting in this episode, I have to say. Like she something's 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 up. Something up with Malva. She she clearly <clears throat> is sincere about the fact that she is afraid for Claire. When Alan shows up, even Alan kind of gets it. Alan's like, you know, it's kind of time to leave. And she's like, no, I'm not leaving her. I'm not leaving her. No, no, no. Um, and I mean, after everything happens, you could make the argument for like, well, was she just using that as an excuse so that she could like have a little like little chat with Jamie and like, you know, be all flirty around him or whatever. And if that is the case, she's just the best actress ever. And not, I'm Jessica, Jessica Reynolds, the, the actress who's playing Malva is a very good actress, but like, I'm talking Malva herself. Like, because when she said, I will not leave her to Alan, I, I bought it. I bought it. I bought that Malva was like, not going anywhere because she, Claire was that important to her. What did you think? Uh, no, I did not. I was sitting there like, mm-hmm, Malva, we know why you're sticking around. We know why you won't leave her. I absolutely did not buy that Malva was so devastated. Maybe if I didn't read the books, sure. If I didn't read the books, I would have bought it. That's why she's so good. Because even Claire, later on, at the worst time, at the worst, Malva showed the worst of herself. And even Claire was still reaching out because Malva comes off as being a good soul. But in this instance, when this was going on, I read the book. So I was like, Malva, what are you up to, you dirty bird? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I read the books too. And I'm trying to sort of forget that and just kind of like, 
only think about what we've seen so far. Uh-huh. And it's just so like this, it's just so it's such a dichotomy of like, she really does sincerely seem to admire Claire and care about her. Right. But at the same time, she's all but throwing herself at Jamie. And I'm like, I'm like trying to marry up the two in my head to, and, and kind of under like kind of, kind of absorb the fact that both could be true. She doesn't have to be like, you know, concocting this big scheme against Claire to win Jamie. She could very well like love Claire and want Jamie all in one big package. Well, her her mental health could be that unstable that there are two different maybe not personalities she, two different person people she could have car- compartmentalized she could have two completely different situations happening in her head at one time who knows right right i just i don't think that this is a big ruse against claire i mean I think she's sincere in in her in the fact that she cares about Claire and she admires Claire and she wants to be like Claire and I don't think she's pretending that. That's 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 what I think. Um but yeah, so Claire gets sicker. She's getting sicker. Malva kind of kind of goes to Jamie and gives him some tea. Yeah, but wait. What? Don't you think that she I mean, later on, we find out that she's all, remember, you were at the window with the bottle and I came up to you. And so Malva's like, oh, yeah, there's my chance. Claire's out. I'm going to hang out here. Um, It's so, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I mean, she is. She, I mean, OK, let's talk about the love charm. Is Jamie is Jamie the recipient of the spell? Um, or if you are taking Jamie, if you, I mean, if you, if you're buying Jamie's, um, argument that it's not me, is she just trying to get a man with this love charm because she knows she's pregnant and she needs to like have a man to, to. Or is she trying to get. Did you get the feeling, is she trying to get with that love spell? And guys, I don't know. I'm, I'm so like questioning. Was she trying to get whoever the culprit is? Maybe they, what would the term be? Rebuffed? Mm-hmm. Like maybe they were like, I don't care, you know, get away from me. And she was, you know, hoping that they would love her. She was just a girl standing in front of a love <laughs> charm. What is, it, charm. what is it called? Charm. Is the round charm. circle. Love charm. Yes. She was just a girl standing in front of a love charm, asking it to ask somebody to love her. <laughs> Maybe that was the case. Or, oh my God, I was so Mrs. Harris, fourth grade teacher, you guys. Or was she trying to get Jamie? I don't know, because frankly, from what we've seen, I don't know that she, like Claire dreamt that part. Am I correct? Oh God. I no, she, that. I don't think so. I think it really happened. That, that, that Malva came in the house at the she, end, that, she, that, that Malva Jamie? came in the house and got in her face and was like, I want oh, your husband, part. I want your house, oh, I want your this, oh. I want your that. Because. Is it a case of Malva really wants Jamie or is it a case of Malva is loves Claire so much and is mental. So her mental, every time I do like this, I feel like Wendy Williams, her mental, her, 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 I don't want to say is mental. What's a, what's a proper terminology for having mental health issues. Maybe her mental health issues are, causing her to want Claire's life because she loves Claire so much. This is where I'm saying compartmentalizing. No, no, I, see I see what you mean. So maybe she so maybe she wants Claire's life so much that she's going after Jamie and it's not that I never ever ever have gotten a feeling that she's so in love with Jamie. 
at all. So it's more of like, um, why am I not remembering this name of this movie? But the Bridget Fonda. Um, oh, single white female. Single. It's, it's more of a single white female situation. You guys. So, uh, yes. And I, um, when I was buying my car, I was getting this. I, I ended up getting the same car as my friend Barb. And when she asked me what color I got, I really wanted the blue one, but she had the blue one. So I got <laughs> the white one. And I was like, oh, Barb, I, like I couldn't say, I was already single white femaling you enough. <laughs> so single white female is a verb in my world. <laughs> but um, honest to God. So you're thinking, wait, that she's single white female and Claire. Yeah. I mean, I, it's hard. This is you guys, because a lot of you are going to be in the comments like, now it's like, of course, it's like, no, 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 no. We know where we know where all this is going. You know, we know where all this is going. We've read the books, but we're just trying to sort of think through all of this for because there's a lot of people who have not read the books. So we're trying to put our mindsets just so you guys know the book readers. Yes, we know what happens, but we are also trying to put our mindsets into the minds of the non book readers and sort of look at it from their perspective and play along with what they may think or not think, or maybe haven't realized yet. Um, and I think your, your point, Carol, is very well taken. This whole, like, I want to be Claire. I want to have what she has. But you could also make the point, like, I mean, I think we're all in agreement. I, I think we're all in agreement based on everything with this episode that Jamie is not the father of Malibus Little Spawn, right? mm are we in agreement about right, that? Right, right, right. Absolutely, a thousand percent. It's Jamie Fraser. Come on. So okay, so Mal was knocked up, but it's wait. not a good thing to be knocked up in the 18th century, um, especially when you're one of the Fisher folk and your dad is Tom Christie and he's going to beat you. Okay, okay, that's what I was just going to say. So she had she needs to a baby say, daddy. She absolutely had to say also. Well, although she did tell her father, like, well, you were just so sad so i had to she even said like it wasn't even the first time she said wasn't um she was not forced oh yeah yeah can you this is so great this is so great let's imagine let's role play if you will let's role play how this conversation goes down between tom christie and malva do you want to be tom christie or do you want to be malva um I could probably want to be Malva, but I'll be whoever you want me to be. Okay. No, all right. You be Malva. Okay. So I'm Tom Christie and I'm sitting here, um, here, I'm, uh, reading, I'm reading, I'm reading my Bible. Okay. Uh-huh. Malva, what do you want? Um, father, I don't know how to tell you this. Spit um, it out. I'm with child. <laughs> what? It isn't it my. Fault. It isn't my fault, father. <laughs> it's that devil woman you're working with, who I secretly love, but I will never admit it. I'm pretty sure Tom Christie knows that Claire really isn't the culprit in this situation. <laughs> um, but wait, because the reason I want to do this is like I want to see at what point Mal was like. Well, I'm not going to tell you oh, who is the father. I'm I'm having PTSD flashbacks <laughs> to that video we made that time where we had a Barbie being Claire and and a bar and and probably pocket Jamie and we were throwing them around and you were like Claire, I must have you. <laughs> this is why my wait, throat. I wanted to have so okay. So Tom Christie's like, you know, who is the father? So now Malva says. No, she wouldn't tell him. I know this, but I, this is I, I want to know how this goes I down. Can't, I can't so, okay. tell you. <laughs> you'll tell me now. You'll, you'll get I, beatings. I, like, I'll beat I, the baby right out of you. I, I'll tell you. Wait, what did she say? I'll tell you when we go see Mr. Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, whoever the identity is of this person, we've done it multiple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the first time wasn't wasn't I wasn't a, I wasn't a force. But if <laughs> if if you could bring uh, my brother Alan along, because I'm I'm sure he can squeeze a good three lines out of it. <laughs> oh my god, that is the conversation, Tony Grafia. That is the conversation you should have written because that conversation is gold. 
Yeah. Instead of uh, just telling us that she I will not tell you. I will not tell you who the father is. I'll only tell you when we go to Mr. Fraser's house. Yeah, that was so <laughs> Oh, and by the by, we do whoever it was, we did it multiple times. No, because where I was gonna go with this was okay, if it's as easy as I just need a baby daddy, look get again. I mean, you did sleep with him. Like, he just not, well, you know, he has a lot of land. No, no, her father would never have approved of that. But oh, I literally, he's appro- well, uh, well I, I literally am sitting here, like, just figuring this out while we're talking. Because, you guys, sorry, but we're backwards tonight in this conversation. Her throat was slit. <laughs> now I'm talking about, like, poor God lover, Nicole Brown Simpson. Because her throat was slit, which is a crime of passion. And which is also a, I'll show you, like, uh-huh. how dare you? Uh-huh. So now I'm starting to think that, like, sh- whoever did get her pregnant, which I'm assuming was Henderson, uh, whoever did get her pregnant, she didn't want. And she refused. And they're like, you know, you're going to be mine. And she's like, no, I'm not. And then they finally, like, lost it and slit her throat. You don't slit the throat unless there's serious emotion going on there. Wow. That is very, very, very <clears throat> astute. But uh, we will never know. Did she really want Jamie? Or like you said, talk about astute, the single white female. She uh, never wanted the guy from Wings. She just wanted Bridget Fonda's life. All right. That's all I have to say. Um. Okay, book readers, book readers. Yes, Tracy's going to talk while I get icing. Don't spoil anything in the comments. We know what happens, but like for our friends who do not know, let's keep it, let's keep it, let's a a mystery. Let's, Um, let's and I think that, uh, you know, a lot of good points have been brought up here about now the psyche, what was motivating her. Um, This is all, this is all super interesting. Super interesting. Yes. I was going to make a point and I totally forgot what it was, but maybe it will come back to me. Um, Just, oh, I know asking. what it was. I know what it was. And we are so jumping around and I do apologize. Um, I, the one thing that was really good about that scene, since we're talking about that scene where they go to Jamie um, and tell him that he's the father is, and I think that that's why Tom Christie is not flipping out because he has something over Jamie. Jamie. Good point. He has Jamie like this. Good point. You will sign a contract. You will acknowledge that this is your heir. He has something on Jamie. And Jamie has looks the power. bad. Yes. Yes. He loves that Jamie looks bad. Yes. That is the only thing keeping him from not flipping out all of this. How do we know? Now I'm just getting into <coughs> complete. <coughs> How do we know that Malva and Tom Christie didn't cook it all up together? We don't. We do not know this, do we? So I, that's interesting, too. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm so sorry, you guys, that I'm eating <laughs> in front of uh, anyone. Okay. All right. Let's go back to where we were. I don't even know where we left. Oh, I know. So we, all right. So we're talking. So, so Malva goes, she brings Jamie a cup of tea, and they have this little conversation and, like, you start to think that, like, maybe something's up with Melba because what I put down is all of a sudden she's forgotten that her mistress Clara might be dying because <clears throat> she's telling Jamie some story about something and laughing and giggling and she's so jovial. And she's like, oh, your grandmother was Lord Lovett, wasn't he? That's so cool. Like, um, and you're like, you do know there's, like, a dying woman upstairs, right? Like, just, you know. Just, just, just wanted to make sure we're not forgetting anything, but okay. Um, and you know, I don't know whether her plan was to, to sort of distract Jamie and like make him like, you know, not worried for about two seconds, or like lure him in with her wiles, with her feminine wiles. But wasn't he the one? Did she ask him about the grandfather, or did he say? <clears throat> no, she asked him. And P.S. You guys. Uh, let's see. You'll be watching this on Sunday. Well, we'll be putting this out on Sunday. I don't know if you'll be watching it, but uh, today is technically Sunday, and yesterday 
was the 9th of April when Simon the Fox, Lord Lovett, was beheaded at the Tower of London for being a Jacobite uh, supporting the cause. And he, like William Wallace and Braveheart, was supposed to be drawn and quartered. But at the last minute, they gave him a stay and decided to behead him anyway. Wow. And he was beheaded on the same block as Anne Boleyn and many others. And here's a little trivia for you. Simon Fraser, Lord Lovett, was the last person to ever be beheaded on that block. Wow. And you can see it, I believe. Um, and it kills me because I've been to the tower twice and I don't remember seeing it, but whatever. Um, okay. So meanwhile, we see Claire and she's having all these fever dreams. She's dreaming about snakes and she's dreaming about cells and she's dreaming about a heart. Then she sees dreams that she's seeing Jamie in, in a window. And we've got a bottle of something and there's Malva. And she comes up to him and she puts her hands like on his shoulder. And you don't really know what's going on. <clears throat> All you are doing is being like, you lying fucking whore. So, sorry. Don't yell at me, Lizzie. Don't yell at me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, she's lying whore. Malva. And I have to tell you again, this scene is right out of the book and it is like exactly as I pictured it in the book. Exactly. I 100%. Said the same thing. Yeah. I was doing something tonight and I thought, my God, that scene was exact of how it was in my head when I was reading it. Yes. It was yes. perfection. Yes. If you ever, if you didn't read the books and you want to know an Outlander's perfection scene, that was it. Yep. The whole Claire, the whole Claire sick part was the just whole, like- Right out of so my good. brain into. I'll tell you something page. else. It was it was quick enough that it wasn't too yes. much. Yes, it was great. Yes. And I'm not going to say the same thing about if I have one fault with this episode, it was too long, and it absolutely could have been cut. But we'll get to that. Um, the whole wait, the episode was too long, and yes, some, yes, and this is like an hour been, and ten minutes. This episode, and, and you're going to mention <clears throat> what could have been cut. Yes, one hundred percent. Yep, yep. So what's okay. next? Okay, so Rogers, we see Roger, and he's sitting with Claire. And again, right from the books, like Roger's the one that's there when she wakes up. And, and I think we said this, we started to say this a little bit, but like, so, okay, don't forget, Carol and I have been talking about like, are they going to do the hair? And I was like, I'm not making any more predictions. I'm done because I've like screwed up every single one. And Carol's like, I don't know. So you pan over to Roger, right? You pan from Roger to Claire. And if you can picture like, a, the, here's the screen, right? And you see Claire's face like in the corner of the screen, but you're not seeing any hair. But you can't, it's her, her face is like up too far. And I'm like, that's a really weird shot. And oh, then I they knew. show her like I that mean, again. You didn't know. You didn't oh, know. Oh, by I that point, knew. I was like, oh my, well, no, what I was thinking was, oh my God, they're going to do it. Oh my God, they're going there. Oh my God, they're going to do it. Oh my the God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Started waking up. I knew. <clears throat> I knew. And, and then when they showed, I was like, oh my God, she's got no hair. They really did it. Tracy was right. Cause didn't you think they were going to do it? I was, no, I didn't. I didn't think one way or the other, but I said, I'm not making any more predictions because every prediction I have made has been shot right down, right down, right down. Um, and yeah. And then they, and then the best part is like, they're like, you know, Roger's like, here, have this water. And you know, she gives, they, he gives her some water. And then they do like a full shot of her, but Roger's arm is like blocking her face. So you don't see it. And then he pulls his arm away and you like the way they unveiled that was just <laughs> bravo. Small, sorry, uh, 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 slow golf clap for that. It was great. It was great. It was really, really great. Um, so yes. So Claire has the Mrs. Bug and Malva chopped off her hair. And this is a part, this is a part where, you really do start to wonder about Malva a little bit because Mrs. Bug, totally believable that she'd be like, the only way we're going to save her is by cutting off her hair because all that hair is making her feverish. Malva knows better. Malva knows better. But if you cut off Claire's hair, she's not pretty, she's not beautiful anymore. She's not pretty anymore. Jamie's um, not going to love her anymore. If it's not about Claire and there is no hair, it ain't there. It ain't there. Um, I I think that Mal is a creepy creep. I love that there's a question. I love that Malva is friggin' what do they say? Worm food? <laughs> I just 
know. I love that they left it open. They left questions. Yes. Like, yes. Like, yes. And why <coughs> was Malva on the up and up? Did Malva cut her hair because she's a cuckoo bird? I think she cut her hair because she's a cuckoo bird. I really do. I, I, I think there was, I think there was something, I, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, it's believable in so many ways. It is sort of believable, this dichotomy of like Malva learning so much from Claire about medicine and, you know, the, the, and the science of medicine, but at the same time being like, you know, believing this old wives tale of you need to cut off the, all the hair if they, to bring a fever down. And, and that's the way everything was done with Malva. And I right. would love to hear if they purposely, like, we're going to leave Malva a little Right. I mean, you could believe that or, and you could believe she, she went along with it. Like she pushed for it because then Claire's going to be ugly and Jamie won't love her anymore. Right. Either, either one makes sense. They all make sense. Right. Um, and Jess if- Reynolds, you know, we will, I mean, I guess we can get to that at the end, but like, ugh, bravo. Very good. Bravo, my friend. Um, I mean, a, a not many episodes, but a hell of an impact from you, girlfriend. So, hang on. Don't go anywhere. Ah, just went right out of my head. All right. So, you know, Roger fills Claire in a little bit. He does say, he's like, nothing could ever make you less beautiful. And it's hard. That's really hard to watch Claire. It was hard to read about it in the books. Claire went through so much shit in the book, in this book. Don't forget, Claire, the, the kidnapping and the rape and everything is, is, is in this book. So we yeah. as readers have just seen her go, go through all that shit. Now she gets her hair chopped off. It's very like, it's very like um, triggering with like, you know, cancer and chemotherapy and, and Claire, I'm sure as somebody from the 20th, the 20th century, a doctor has seen this happen many times to women patients. Um, and, and, you know, so much of your identity is wrapped up in your hair. Um, I just, it, it was, it was, just, it was really good. It was really traumatic. Um, it was really traumatic in the book and they did such a great job with it. Um, you know, and um, even like the wig, the wig's not good, but like, it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to look bad. I'm laughing because obviously it's not funny what Tracy just said, but at the same time, I think more of Tracy and my identity is wrapped up in our hair. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bio on like Facebook or something, when it first started was what's wrong. Is it my hair? <laughs> I, know. I know. I mean, how many times have I said like, Oh God. This is... it, but anyway, but you know what? I, uh, wait, I don't, on. I go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's completely legitimate. Like, don't, you know, anybody who'd be like, oh, your hair, like, what's a big deal? So it'll grow back, whatever. You know what? Right there to you. That's what I say. I can't believe there wasn't more animosity. Like, it was sort of like, yeah, like, Roger and I, like, or or Bree and I weren't home and Bree's really angry and, you know, Jamie just cried and, like, it wasn't like... That was huge. They cut her hair. They cut all her hair off. I don't think you talked to. Br- I think you talked to Brie about it right there. I think. I think. I think you get an earful. You just didn't. You know. I think. I think if Brie walks in on that, Mm-mm. I'm surprised Mrs. Bug still has a job, quite frankly, because and- Brianna understands that. Understands, I think, hair. In the 20th century, I mean, hair in the 18th century is important too, but, you know, they have the caps on it and they have the, you know, they cover it up a lot of, you know, whatever. Um, I think uh, uh, Brie also realizes that your fever is not going to go away if you cut off your hair. Right. Yes. Of course, yes. Brie would Roger have Roger and Brie knows that. And I think probably Jamie realizes that too. But how about that? We didn't even say that. Like Jamie cried. I'm glad they did not show that because I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. I couldn't handle that. Um, All right. Can we keep going? Um, Think about that though. I mean, a week, she was like that a week. You can't live. Like how did they get water into her? They probably just like dribbled it in, you know, maybe she was awake enough to have a few sips sometimes. 
Um, I don't crazy. know. I don't know. <clears throat> um, I did really like the little Brie Claire scene when when Brie runs in the room when Claire is woken up. I thought that was really really lovely. Um, I loved that scene so much. I thought that was one of the best scenes I had seen with Sophie. Yes. And she reminded me of my own daughter. Like that, the way she hugged her, they went through the scene and then sort of like at the end of that little part, she grabbed her mother and and I was like, I felt it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not usually the one giving the most props. So I was like, you are awesome. That scene totally got, I totally felt it. I agree. It had all the feels. I think Sophie has come so far. I, I think Brie, Brie is more likable, which makes things a little easier, but she still has that kind of, I don't quite fit in in the 18th century because I'm like, you know, a 20th century chick mode going on. And it really works. I think it really it makes Brie just, there's there's something, there's just something about Brie. Mm-hmm. You're just like, it's a little different some way. Um, I think she's playing it really well, but yeah, that whole scene was great. It was really great. And is there nothing in the, in the, is there nothing Brie can't do department? Who knew she was also, um, Brie Doll Sassoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nothing. Um, what I want to know is way back to the early days, if Brie was able to turn on the stove for her mother, because <laughs> her mother was a surgeon and couldn't even turn on the stove. Well, all I know is that Brie takes that the Lizzie, I mean the uh, the Malva Mrs. Bug do, and turns it into this like kicky little Mia Farrow gummy number. I think it looks cute. It I does think look the cute. Wig, it does look I cute. think the wig is spectacular. You can barely like. I was like, oh my god! I know she didn't cut her hair, but it was, I mean, she's doesn't it always like, freak you out? You know how much hair she has. When does the hair go? I know they like wet it. And somehow plaster it to their heads, and then they put like the stocking on, and then now, they put I'll the tell wig you on. Because I've had to, I've had to do that before in plays. You pin curl it, so you take it, you take little sections, and you like pin curl it. Like you go, I don't want to rest my hair, but like you, you know, go like this, yeah, and plaster it down with bobby pins, and then you put a wig cap on, oh which is essentially like a big bathing cap. And that sticks everything. And and it'll fit. A lot of hair will fit under that. And then you can I wig. cannot understand. But I think the wig looks good. I really do. I um, was like, this is nothing like Bella's wigs. <laughs> In Eclipse. Um, yeah, it was okay. It was all right. All right. We have to move on from this. Okay. So Claire's back. You know, she has recovered. She's going to be all right. And they found the dead elk in the stream. So their water source is good. Um, and Jamie is like filling every, filling, you know, Claire up to speed with what happened. Just an FYI, this is the part in the book where Claire learns about Army Christian going down the river. Roger saved him. Oh, that's interesting. Fergus tried to kill himself and he's got to send them away. Because I think at this point, Fergus and Marcy are still here. Still here. And that's when Jamie is like, and I think I have to send them away. Um, cause they, you know, there's nothing for them here. So that's how that all goes down over the space of like three pages. You okay. know, I do have to make a little note about the fact that I thought that, um, Kate was so great in the scene where, um, when Brie was cutting her hair because Brie's cutting her hair and she's sitting there in the nightgown and she has like barely any hair. And did you notice her little feet? She had her little tootsies like this. And it was so, she was so like vulnerable and you never see Claire vulnerable. You know what I mean? I know. And she literally, it was like, she was childlike in that big white, you know, and she was just spent, but her little feet, her two, her feet were like one on top of the other like this. And I thought to myself, now I want, this is, this is the kind of wacky stuff that goes through my head when I watch stuff like this. I'm like, was that her idea? Was that the director's idea? Did they say cross your feet and look kind of childlike? Like, or, or did she, or did she even plan to, does she just sit like that in real life? I don't know. But well, I you notice, great. I mean, it's the same with Sam. Like you notice in the, um, I guess maybe it was the Malva accusing him scene. Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. It was, it was when he's like about to um, confess about Mary Knapp. 
and his hands, like, and they talk about this in the books. Like they say, Jamie like drums his fingers or whatever. Yeah. His hand is going like this, like, yeah. like he's playing the piano or whatever. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, you know, I, I think my guess is it's just kind of, in, it, uh, sometimes it may just be instinctive, um, you know, and, and maybe, I don't know, maybe if you asked Katrina, she'd be like, it was called, my feet were really cold. So. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, okay. So Claire, uh, oh, all right. So yeah, she and, she and Jamie talk, you know, this is where says Christ Sassanach, you hardly any ass left at all. And that's right from the book, right from the book. So much of this is right from the book. So I don't think this coming up is right from the book where Claire breaks out of prison here, she breaks out of her, out of her bed. I liked when she told him that her ass would grow back fast too. <laughs> yeah, it always does. Um, and, but Claire breaks out of her sick bay and goes to visit the Fisher folk camp. Um, now, I kind of wondered, you know, they have this lovely church. Some people have houses, but then other people have, like, tents still. Mm-hmm. And it's been months and months and months and months and months. When are they going to get stuff? Or are they just going to keep the tents as, like, the, you know, masonry or the fur, the furry or whatever? I don't know. Couldn't it tell you. Things I think about. Okay. So she goes to visit Tom Christie. They talk. Um, Tom Christie does Claire Claire had heard about his symptoms and she was like, you know, I have a headache. And, um, what was the other one? She, I don't know. She, uh, she had a headache and a fever, I guess. Right. But and she and didn't she have any bloody loose. flux. Right. Nor did Tom Christie. Right. And she's like, well, that's kind of weird. Um, you know, that you and I haven't seen each other in a long time and yet we have the same thing. Like, how did, how did it, how did you get it? And he's like, you just get it, whatever. So Claire, and this was like, this was so ill-advised on Claire's part. Oh, oh so Claire, Claire did a lot of ill-advised things in this episode, let me tell you. It was like, Claire, come on, really? So Claire's like, well, I have an idea. Here, if you fill this bottle with your poop. <laughs> Can I have some of your poops? <laughs> Can I have some of your poops? And then, um, you know, I can test it. I can bring it back. I, there's so much there's so much wrong with that I don't even know what to say like she's gonna really I mean does she wear gloves when she does this like uh, does she do, do you think she like looks at other people's poop in Listen, the microscope I didn't have a problem <clears throat> with this I think that if she's as you know maybe she spent all those 20 years like really getting really proficient, like really good with the microscope. Okay. Oh, I'm sure she's very good with the microscope. This is all this is all stuff that, you know, in the books, blah, blah, blah. So I don't, I don't think it's odd that she would want to go through the poop. All she wants is a tiny little sample of the poop to put on the microscope and look. What I think is odd is her not realizing that 18th century Tom Christie's going to, she thinks she's a freaky (laughs) deep. How could you possibly ask him for some of his poop? I mean, has anyone given her any of their poop? Well, I mean, I'm sure. Like, honestly, people, you, because, you know, you know, all right. So, like, when you get to be a certain age, you have a colonoscopy every 10 years, but supposedly, (laughs) like, you might, you don't always need to do that. Like, you, there's another test that you do where, you have to sort of like self-administer it, if you will, and then like send it back in the mail. <laughs> you mean like the one for like if you don't want to go through the colonoscopy that you do? Yes. Did? Yes. And like, <laughs> and again, I'm not laughing at the colonoscopy. I'll tell you why I'm laughing. Um, there's been a couple instances like, okay, I'll tell you this. So my husband was supposed to do that a couple times, right? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? What if like his mother watches this and you're whispering about his poop? <laughs> And so he would get it from the doctor and I'd be like, okay, well, you're going to do that, right? He's like, yep, sure I am. And he never, never would do it because he's just like, it's too disgusting. <laughs> it's too disgusting. To have so to did like, he get the colonoscopy? Yeah, he's had colonoscopies before. Oh, then what is he getting this thing for? This was a long time ago. This was a while ago. I don't even know. Like maybe it's, I don't know if you're a guy, maybe it, they want you to do it more often. I don't know. But like it's it's gross. It's gross to have to do that. 
Um, but like if you're John Christie and it's a, the 18th century, to your point, like uh, has anybody else given Clara Hart their poop? Does okay, she have a does all, she have a precedent for this? First of all, you all saw not so we Ian behind me, all six feet of him. He I told you he went to the gastro last week. He had to give samples. He could barely be in the bathroom. He was like, <laughs> once a mother, always a mother. I'm like, give me that. And I'm picking out samples of poop and putting them in test tubes. Did you wipe my butt? No, Jesus, no. You, you go in like a, they call it, a, Tommy used to call it a hat. You go in a little plastic thing that you stick in the toilet. You put the little, you put the little, there's like a little bowl in your toilet and you go in that and then you have to take samples and the test tubes. And if you ever have to do this, you guys listen up the test tube. When you unscrew the cap, the cap, you don't know this until you do it has a little like um, spatula on it (laughs) You unscrew it and you take a little and you shove it into the test tube. Didn't phase me. Did not in the least. I was like, mm-hmm, whatever. And he's in the doorway, like, <laughs> it's so funny. So my point of all of this is, it sounds, it's not bothering Claire. Of course it's not bothering One Claire. Bit. But, like, it's bothering every other, like, living being in the well, 18th century. Look, this is what I'm going to tell you right now. And we are going to get into this. I am sorry, but she needs to pipe it the frick down and realize, you know, and, and oh, you know, did you happen to notice? I got to jump for a second. When she had the conversation with Malva after, after which, what, you know, knowing what's going on with Malva, and yet she mm-hmm. still goes and talks to Malva. Right. Did you notice that the minute Malva, Malva was like crying to her. And then the minute Alan came out and Malva was like, yep. Yep, she makes people like tries to kill she's them and the brings, brings a she's a witch. The minute Claire hears witch, I'm out. Bye. Claire's out because she's like knows what it's like to be accused of witchcraft and they'll kill her. Right. So that is why I'm like, the hell are you doing asking this guy for his poop when you know damn well he doesn't understand. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she maybe she thought that there they had a connection that, that maybe um he'd be willing, you know, because she's done so many other medical shit for him, maybe he'd be willing to give her a poop too. <laughs> but no, ill ill advised. So I, but but at the same time that scene was so funny because She's like, no, it's for medicinal purposes only. <laughs> and he's and like, he's like you, are disgusting. you are disgusting and you need to leave, but I'll walk you home. And he just loves her so much. He just loves, he loves her the same way that Lord John loves Jamie. And can oh never my God, say. yes. It's I have forbidden love down. he cannot say. I have, it's one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen. It was terrifying, but it's also very dark humor. I know. He's the, I mean, he's like, this woman like just asked him for his poop and he's like, you know, have you no shame, madam? You must leave. Here, I'll walk you home. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hat on. He's um, so awkward, but he loves her so much. I know, but I but well, and and just like his daughter. Just like his daughter, she should love hate. But let me ask you a question, because I thought this was one of the most important things of the episode. How is it that he was perfectly fine? And Claire is still like sick. He had it less than her, whatever they had. No, I thought he had it just as bad because Jamie was like, he's still in a bad way. Well, unless he was bad before Claire, which also factors into my point. Don't forget, Claire had just walked like five miles to the Fisher Folk camp. Okay, but he was fine and she was not. So it made me say, okay, when did he get sick? Was he sick a few days before her? Uh-huh. They saw each other in church. True, true, true. Was he at the funeral? Because that's where she. That's when where she, she got dropped. sick. Yeah. I don't know, but they had just seen each other in church. I mean, she, that could be. That was probably at least a week, though. I, she was say. at death's door, and she's still sick, and he's walking her home. And 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 let's face it, she's like, what do we have here? That you know, you and I had the splitting headache from hell and and the fever, 
and everyone else had the bloody flux. So obviously you're watching this and you're like, hmm, what's the common denominator between Claire and Tom Christie? Oh yeah, it's Melva. So I'm like, all right, what the hell did Melva do to the two of them? And now we'll never know because Melva's going to take it to the grave. I don't know. I, let's hope we find out. Let's hope we find out. Well, I was just going to say, you guys, this is where I have no idea what happens in the books. I don't <laughs> remember. I didn't even remember Melva dying. So <laughs> I don't, I am just as on the edge of my seat as the non-book readers. I have, I have a reminder for you that you're going to remember Melva dying, but, I'm, but we're not going to get there yet. Um, all right. So let's go, let's, keep going jamie is not happy about claire breaking out of jail and she's grounded for life <laughs> <laughs> you're grounded for life claire um and then i was just like apropos of nothing i was it, it hit me like ian has not been in this episode at all like yeah. i think ian would have been sitting by the bedside a little bit but right. you know whatever um claire wakes up it's nighttime and jamie's on the floor and it does harken back to the very first season where he stopped outside her door and it's super cute. Um, they remember they walked down memory lane. Um, we find out that Jamie was asked to speak at some congressional meeting in New Bern. Um, that, so he's going to be going to that soon. And then they have this big, long conversation about like, you know, Claire's like, you know, Claire's like, well, what, you know, draws you, draws me, you to me or whatever. And it's all from the book. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? You're going to cut your hair again? No. <laughs> no, come on. No. Hot take. You're not going to, people who are like, see the book as gospel are not going to like it. Oh, well, this could have gone. Well, it was it was it was adorable. To see Jamie on the floor, but literally the only important thing to know out of that scene is that Jamie is going to go to the Congress meeting in New Bern. The rest of it could go. It just feels like when they got to the part where, like you know, well, what do you see in me, or like what are my good qualities? Didn't and like, I have written down that's something they would have done twenty years ago. What are they doing right now? I know it just is like haven't we had this conversation a million times? And yes, it's Jamie and Claire, and yes, we like to hear like them all this love talk and whatever. But like when your episode is an hour and ten minutes, much like okay, I'll give you an example. Our recaps, we have had so much shit to say about these episodes because they're so good this season. Obviously, we talk about other stuff too. Guess where all that other stuff is? On the cutting room floor. Because I cut it all out. So just so that maybe these recaps will be under two hours. Because we have so much to say about them. Because I know we don't want them to be three hours. This is something that this episode could have been shorter in my in my view. And this scene should have gone. It used this to is, be This is the hour. DVD, the cut scene. This is the cut scene. In, I know. Remember when our recaps were like an hour and 15 minutes? Well, I'm like, oh, dear God, how do we get this long? Um, and I just feel like with Zoom, we are not like watching the clock anymore. Um, we just start and to it's, go to and, sleep and, and that's and there's people that might not like it, but then there's other people who are like, "We love it, keep going." Yeah, uh, so, so whatever. I, it's we're hard not going to have know. that discussion now. But I, but I do, I really feel like this episode was too long. I am the same way as you. I had literally that written down. Jamie talks about the Sons of Liberty and Cornelius and asks him to come to the next meeting. And they have conversation about Claire's traits and it's very cute, but something that would have happened 20 years ago, not now. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Got... People who have been married for 5 million years don't lay around like, oh, and what was the best part of it? Come on. <laughs> They're like, move over, You're stealing the covers. And, sh- and I can quit hear snoring. you snoring. Put <laughs> one of those things on your nose. That's what goes on after you've been together as long as these do. Um, all right. So, but one thing you see is that we're starting to have this refused British goods be- deal. And I actually screen like I stopped so I could read the little, um, the I little wanted to, and I didn't have time. What did it okay. say? No more importing goods, tea, molasses, syrups, 
Panelet, P A N E L E S. I don't know what that is, and coffee. So um, we're not going to get any more of that for a while, people, and it's not going to be fun on the ridge because there's going to be no caffeine source. You know what that means? Acorn coffee's coming back. Yup. All right. So Jamie's off to New Bern with Roger. They are going to decide some delegates to Congress. Um, I-, I was wondering, like, like would Bree or or Claire or Roger know, like, that Jamie is not going to be one of these one of these congressional candidates or congressional people? No. Like, have Roger- they seen? Well, I don't think I don't think 1776 was like written then. Because like I was trying to, I mean, I love that that musical. Um, our friend Karen I, Henry does too. I we, think. Oh, Karen! We text. I, I we te- we like Facebook each other every year on Fourth of July when it's on. Did you see it? Just see outlandish it. observations, you guys. Outlandish Check it out. That's Karen Henry. She is the okay, OG. She is she an is. outlander OG. She is. She's the czar. She used to be the composer of czar, and now she's the czar of. She's the bumblebee herder. <laughs> Love it. Okay, wait. Uh, yeah. And there, when the minute he started talking about going to Philadelphia, but I was like, like okay, could, could I name which what representatives, what con- congressional delegation representatives would I know? Again, I was really trying to think of it would be North Carolina, and I think that like, is it Rutledge is from North Carolina or is he from Pennsylvania? I don't remember. Oh God, I don't know. I just I like everything I know about the Congress is seventeen seventy six. And I think there's somebody from from North Carolina that has a song in 1776, but I don't really. Know. But like, I just wonder if they would know. Like, ja- yeah, Jamie Fraser. No, sorry, mm-hmm. you're not a part of this. I I know it. I know. I know you're not because I read the Declaration of Independence or whatever. Right, except for don't you think Roger would be like, um, they don't pick you, and Jamie would be like, F Timmy, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they're packing up. Rogers, they're getting on the road. Ding dong. It's the Krusty. It's coming to visit. They're like, we need to talk now inside. So yes, as we have been talking about throughout this podcast, Malva is knocked up. Um, did you guys see that coming? I want to know. Tell us in the comments. Book, not, non-book readers. I didn't even see it coming. And I really <laughs> Honest say- to God, I forgot. I knew she accused, but I did not remember a pregnancy. Um, I remembered, but I do think that they've done a pretty good job. You know, I said this last week. I was like, when <laughs> when she was talking to Ian a couple episodes ago, and they stopped it where she was like filling up his tats, and then they said something, and they're just kind of staring at each other like this. And I said to you, Carol, did they do it? There. Have it written I down. When did. we get to that, when we get to that part, I literally have it written down. Um, um, yeah. So we know she she did. She probably did. She well, we know she did it with Ian. Um, what's his name? Uh, Wait a remember. minute! You jumped. You jumped big time. No, I'm saying like I said. Who did we see that coming? Did we see it coming that Malva was going to be pregnant? Um, and I don't think I don't think we did because well, I I don't know that we saw it coming, but. No, 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 no. You're right. No, we, she couldn't. Well, we didn't know what she got up to with Henderson and the church. Right. Right. Um, excuse me. No, I don't think we did because we didn't know she was with Ian until tonight. We, right. you, you surmised from the cutesy little banter that the, the, um, the good bat, uh, and you know, that they were all cute, that you figured maybe something went down with her, with she and Ian, right. with her and Ian, but um, no, we don't, as an audience, we don't know. All we know is that she was making out, aka kissing, right. and rolling around on the floor. Right. With I don't think they did it in the church. It's Malva. Now that we know that Malva a ho, I'm sure they did it in the church. I don't think they did it in the church. That's stupid. Like, right in the middle of the church for anybody to walk in? No. She's not that stupid. Um. So, Okay. So tell us in the comments if you saw that coming. Um, so she accuses Jamie, Jamie's face, Sam, Hewen, uh great. Because he's all, you know, Jamie has this look of like, just I'm trying to be a nice guy here. <laughs> we'll help you last. It's all good. Like, 
What? No. He was very sweet. Too. Yeah. When he didn't realize she was going to accuse him. He's so great. He's it's like he was with Alan in the beginning when right. Alan stole the, you know, he was like, we'll take care of it. Like, right. Right. Know. It's on, no one's going to be on you. It's yeah. All so I thought that was great. And meanwhile, little did he know. I know. But his face, like just the transformation was great. Um, <clears throat> when he's like, I'm like, we didn't mean to hurt you. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When Malva says to Claire, I, we, me and Jamie, we didn't mean to hurt you. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. 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 And Claire. Oh, and then, well, before that, like Alan's, Alan's like, is, is all, you know, oh, I'm going to beat up Jamie Fraser. Yeah. You go with that. You have fun with that. Yeah, I, Christy, he, you dumbass. He, <laughs> He went, got one. He got one. Like he got one. Shot. He got a. He sucker punched him. He got a so pop of course, in. Yeah. Jamie didn't expect it, but right. the second time he tried it, Jamie was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Jamie, Jamie was Keanu Reeves in the Matrix when he finally <laughs> figures out like what the hell's going on, and and then he's like, oh." <laughs> Like Jamie didn't even bat, and Jamie's like, "Yeah, I'll be right with you." I just started like it was great. It was great, and I knew it. Didn't you know it? Like yeah, I was yeah. like, "Oh, Alan, try that again." I really want to see. Jamie was just like, "You're a bug." Um, yeah, that was fantastic. So, oh my god, and she oh she keeps going with this like talk about ill advised. When the sickness came, she and Jamie comforted each other. And then Malva says, he took me against the wall whilst you lay sleeping. And then Claire, like, boom! <laughs> Claire got in a good one. And it was and no one cared. Beauty. Not, a, not a person in that room was like, oh, don't hit Malva. They were like, <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing. And I thought Malva, did we see what was going on with Jamie and Claire in the barn that time when Malva was watching? Yes. Were they I mean, standing we, up? I think so. I mean, because, it's, it's very clear that that's where she saw everything. Like, right. Yeah. But I, well, I think, she was talking about his upper thigh, and and wasn't that where he got bit by the snake? Like, isn't that? Did, didn't he tell her that? You just touched on something that I forgot all about from when she said that, and I watched it, and I was like, huh. I have to assume that my girl's cray cray, and that he was hammered. He was drinking the the scotch right out of the bottle. I think he was just so hammered, he probably passed out. And then she was like, let's see what's under here and under here. Oh, uh, no, no. At the window? How else would she know what's on his upper thigh? Because she saw him naked doing it with Claire. Oh, come on. She's not going to be able to see that well. Didn't oh, he, the I, little crescent shapes. But didn't, he, but didn't he say, I forget if he said where his, where the snake bit him. Now, I think it went, it goes down at the window exactly as you see it go down because Claire's not hallucinating that. Claire sees that. He's standing at the window. He's all, you know, like, oh, Claire, don't die, don't die, don't die. Yeah. And she's like, oh, let me comfort you. And he's like, get away, Alice, I'm be alone with my bottle and my sick wife. I thought that um, was olive oil for a minute there. I just wanted to tell you yes. that you were throwing around. <laughs> Jamie, back Jamie, back was like, <laughs> Jamie was like, Jamie was like, Give me the material, lass. <laughs> um, so Claire smacks her and like America cheers. It's great. Yeah. So I, you know, she's seen the scars. She can describe them. I, th- I, I thought you told her about the snake, but whatever. And that's where we got. <clears throat> then we get to the part where he we didn't talked about say before. there's a crescent shaped scar on my upper thigh. Come on. I just feel like you know. She could have seen him anywhere. Like she could have like been stalking him a little bit. He goes, he like swims around in the lake naked. He does this naked, he does that naked, whatever. Oh, I don't even think she needs to see him in the lake. She would freaking look right through the, the door. Right. Or maybe she just took a shot and she was just like, I'm gonna like 
I'm gonna like double down on you know scar because Jamie's got scars <laughs> everywhere. Crescent Where does he have a scar? On his upper thigh. Tra- I'm pretty sure Tracy has a star shape <laughs> on her toe. <laughs> Whoa, but this that is Jamie. Range. Jamie has scars everywhere. Like you, you know, it's odds are pretty good that if you're like, oh, I think he has a crescent shaped scar on his, somewhere on his right leg. Um, you know, it's gonna be true. Um, okay. So Tom Christie again, like he, all he sees is he's got Jamie between a rock and a hard place. You know, it's his dream position to be in. He is got all the power. He's like, here's how it's going to go down. You know, he doesn't really seem to give a, a crap about his daughter's, you know, virtue or anything. It's like, you're going to sign this paper. You're going to like, you know, just um, like claim heirship of his, of her kid. You can maybe raise him if Tom you want. Christie. Maybe it's, maybe like, it's like a cider house rules situation. You know, you're the second person that has talked about cider house rules and like, a couple of days to me and What's i've never business? read it you even you even know your business son tommy's tom used to be a fan of the cider house rules <laughs> i've never read it mind your it. business do you even know your business son uh maybe maybe we've all seen him beat her maybe he did more than that and maybe she got pregnant and he had to cook something up maybe that's why he wasn't freaking out i can't I mean, understand why he wasn't more mad i think i think this whole I, i'm telling you i think he finally has bested Jamie Fraser. Or has he? All right, keep going. Keep going. Okay, so Jamie throws them all out. Um, and Jamie and Claire talk. And this is the scene that I wanted all that other scene cut so I could really enjoy this scene rather than being like, what time is it? We like when are we gonna do this recap? Like how am I you know, oh my god? All I have to say is one thing about this scene. This scene is fantastic. This Who is everybody's the happy scene. hell is Mary McNabb? <laughs> <laughs> Greatest line of the series. <laughs> Who the hell is Mary McNabb? Oh my God. Again, this is like right from the books and it went down exactly as I pictured. You know, you have this nervous Jamie, like, mm-hmm. I do have to confess. And Claire's like, oh God, what? Oh what? yeah, I felt you know, that. I, my you God. Know, I, I was laying with someone, like whatever. She's like, <clears throat> who? She's like, it was when you were gone, you know, a uh, Mary was it. She's like, and the minute what? he said when you were gone, she was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, whatever, whatever. <laughs> we don't even need to talk about but that. But I mean, she already knows this because she knows he is a kid. She knows that he's laying with somebody else. This is, and I, I don't really, I don't know that I really thought this through when I read it, but, but when I watched it, I was like, Jamie, why is this? Why are you treating this as such a big deal? Because Claire already knows that you had a kid with another woman that you laid laid with, laid with, lied with, whatever. I don't know. Uh, I think that seemed a little far fetched that he wouldn't have told her that too when they were catching up on all those years. But I was a little annoyed AF when she saw. You know, I really wish you would have told me about Mary. Really, Claire? Did you tell Jamie about the leche cocktail with Frank? <laughs> Did you tell Jamie about all the times the man confesses one time in a cave the night before they're going to take him away to prison for seven years? And you, you and your uppity self wishes he would have told you. Claire was married to Frank for 20 years, and we all know that they had a healthy sex life. I mean, right. honest to God, Claire, get But I don't think, I, I mean, I don't even remember her saying that, quite frankly. I mean, she I She did. I wrote it down. I, I know. I'm sure she did. Me. But I wasn't like, I, I, maybe I was writing something else down. I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't stick with me. What did stick with me was like, <clears throat> who's Mary McNabb? Like, what are you talking about? Of course, I, of course, who's I'm not upset. Mary McNabb? Um, so then what they're saying, you know, by daybreak, the whole ridge will know what happened, which they will. And Claire's like, no one will believe it. And Jamie says, they'll all believe it. And that's uh, that where great. I'm like, again, like, are we just like living with Fisher folk now? What's happened to all the all of Jamie's arch arch men who call him McDo and he can do no wrong in their eyes? Is um, this kind of an example of like something that he's done wrong and now they're like, you know, he's let us down? And in the 18th century, is sleeping with a beautiful young girl 
doing wrong in their eyes? I don't think so. I, don't get me wrong. There's a religious contingent here. I don't, I think that they're, they'd be like, woo. But no, that's why Jamie said they'll all know about it. Like this, it's not that odd for the Laird to have his way with the young, beautiful girl. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. So that was, but that was a really great scene. Um, a lot of emotion there. You know, it's and it's unfortunate that we had had like ten minutes, another ten minute scene of Jamie and Claire. It was just like I wanted that to be the star Jamie and Claire moment, and it didn't yeah. feel like it to me. Unfortunately, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, so we get a little aside where Bree tells Roger about Sandy. Do you remember Sandy from like three seasons ago, from season three? Yeah, Frank's little girlfriend. Mm-hmm. It's like, and you and you you know, stupid candy, Sandy. <laughs> that was the funniest line of Outlander. <laughs> um, I forgot about that. But I thought that that scene with Brie and Roger was very good. I thought it was very real. And I forget sometimes that Roger is also, they are both 20th century people. So they had that conversation in a 20th century kind of yes. way. Yes, and I like, I like that they do that. You know, Brie will say, wow. Or she'll say, she'll just like bust out 20th century um, expressions or even like styles. And I like, I like that. I like that. It makes her a little different, as I said, but it gives them sort of their own special connection. Right. But this was, this time was even 50, 50, she and he discussing it like 20th century people. And I thought it was great. Did you notice how Brie is starting to like pick up the Scott speak? Like she was like, so you did this then. Like oh, she, okay. Um, no. Yeah, I did. I laughed a little at that. The other thing I want to ask you about is, what are you thinking of Roger's beard these days? I've never been a fan of Roger's beard. Roger's but beard is getting out of control. I think. What I noticed in that scene was I was screaming. Were you not screaming at the screen? Why aren't you telling Bree what you saw in the church? I guess that was never a big deal to them because I, when it happened, was like, how could he not go right back and tell Brie what went down, what happened with Malva? Not only because she's your wife and you're going to tell her this wacky thing that just went down, but also because she threatened Roger. She She's basically blackmailing Roger and and Roger's like, for something Roger didn't even do. Remember? And when he thought, I thought, her- I, I thought she did. I thought he did tell her because later on, Claire's like, when she's talking to Ian, he, di- he okay. I'm sticking with the timeline of the episode. We're not there yet. In this scene, when he was talking to Bree, he did not say anything about seeing Malva in the church. Right, so but this, that doesn't mean. But that doesn't mean that he didn't tell her that they had already talked about it. At this point, we don't know. We don't know until Claire says Roger saw her in the church with Henderson. That's when we finally know. And I go, oh, good. All right. Roger told. Because at this point where we are in the show right now, I'm like, how is he not telling her? Like, See, you, that's, I agree to disagree there because I just assume that he told her and we're not and he, they're not saying anything about it. I don't know. I want 100%. He wanted, are you kidding? He got home and he's like, okay, <laughs> I got some good tea for you, Bray. Uh-huh. You didn't. This is got one thing you didn't admit. You I, I would like to have seen that. To tell you, I would have liked to have seen him tell her. I would like to see a lot of things, but I would like to see Jamie cry. Uh, you know, when Claire uh, when, or Bree react to the haircut, but you just can't see everything. Um, I, I but the be- the beard though. I just I have to say the beard is getting really long, and the problem with the beard I'm having is that it makes Roger look older, and Bree and. Claire really, really look like mother and daughter. I mean, they 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 exude mother and daughter a mother and daughter relationship. Roger's starting to look like the same age as Jamie in my book. Well, and I age. noticed that earlier earlier in the episode when they were doing the little house on the prairie coming out of church biz. Yeah, and it really like sort of knocks me out of like where they're all supposed to be. Like it made it makes. Like Jamie's looking particularly young and Roger's looking particularly old and it's kind of messing me up a little bit. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, okay. We ready to move on? 
Yes. I am um, ready to move on. So Claire, this is where Claire, you had talked about this a little bit. Claire goes to see Malva. And you're just like, why, Claire? Like, are are you trying to salvage this relationship with, the, with her? No. Are you trying to talk her out of accusing Jamie? And maybe you think that you can, you know, appeal to her nature and the fact that you know she cares about you? Do you want my answer? Or are you, yes. is there a third? Situation? No, I no, that's it. I, I want your answer. Um, I took it as Claire knows that she and Malva have been tight and that Malva looks, Claire knows Malva looks up to her. And Claire's thinking, you know what? I'm going to at least try it. I'm going to try my hand and see what I can get out of her and see if she'll trust me. She she trusts me. And, and I, think, I think I can get to the bottom of this. And I think maybe Malva will confess. And when I tell you, Malva was, I'm not going to say close to confessing, but Malva was um, breaking, not breaking down in front of her, but softening up. And right. she started crying and Claire saw it and Claire right. knew. What? Well, and I and think then right. that then that damn Alan came outside and pulled his BS and she's afraid of Alan too. So she started with the yeah, uh-huh. She puts people to she kills people and brings them back to life. Yep. And the minutes Claire saw that and her go in that witch direction, Claire was like, F off, Malva, I'm done. I'm out of here. Um, I think that you're absolutely right. And I do think that she was about to, I think that she was about to crack. I really do. I really do. I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, I really did love Claire as gently as possible, but as firmly as possible saying, whatever you do, Malva, this is not going, Jamie and I have been through so much more than you'll ever imagine. And this is not going to come between us. Right, right, right. Like she, like very matter of factly, very <laughs> gently, but very firmly. Right. This is not going to work. So back off, baby. Back off. I'm a scientist. <laughs> um, yeah, it really felt like that Malva was going to tell, tell Claire the truth until Alan came out. So clearly, There, she's feeling the pressure from the family about something. And whatever it is, is keeping her, is tying her to the story about Jamie being the father. And um, what do you mean, whatever it is? I think it's that she doesn't want to admit who she was with. She doesn't want to admit that she, of her own free will, got down and dirty with someone well she doesn't want to admit to her father or her brother she doesn't want to admit or she's being told not to admit well that's what where i was going before but but the thing is if that's the case why like why they would freak out they would freak out I, but I, they're I, not this is the thing this is where tom well alan is alan the came way. out yes. and Alan's freaking out more than Tom. Tom, they pull up in the wagon, and Tom's like, "Yeah, we need to stop you." Alan is the Tom, dude. Alan, Alan. I mean, Tom. Tom. Uh, granted, the Fisher folk don't really have like shotguns, but you know, any normal father would have found one and been like, "I need to talk to you, Fraser." And like, here's the minister. You know, you're gonna marry her, or you're gonna like do right by her. Tom was just like, "Okay, here's how it's gonna go down." You're going to sign a contract. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. He's, you know, if you're, if you're Tom, if you're, if you're Tom Christie, or if you're like a, a, a like, if you're worried about a reputation, you're going to be like, I need to find somebody to marry this girl. I do. I, I mean, I did almost feel sorry for Malva in that minute, uh, in that, in that portion though. Um, I never feel sorry for Malva ever. I, she's, I, I do. I felt a little sorry for her. Because I, I might have in the very beginning of the season, but. Bye-bye Clearly, she is conflicted. She's conflicted. Okay. Okay. So Ian gets into a little shout and match, and then a fisty match with the with the Fisher folk because they're like insulting Uncle Jamie, and he's not ha- having that. Do you think he he like took down all the Fisher folk? 
They didn't really show it. They're just like, we you know. in no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because oh, one of them got him and he went down. Oh, all right. Um, okay. Clara's in the garden. Oh no, it's Lionel Brown. It's not really Lionel Brown, but it looks like him. And it seems okay. like him. Why? Uh, what was happening before she was in the garden? Ian was getting beat up. Did she do, did she do the ether before she was in the garden? No, 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 no. That's later. later. Okay. Right. Okay. My okay. God, we've so got to hurry up if that's later. She's in the garden, but it's not much later. She's in the garden. Um, Lionel, she, she, she hears something. She thinks she hears Lionel Brown, but really it's Ian. Ian has a confession. He did it with Malva. It's his kid. <laughs> Claire's like, Ian, everybody did it with Malva. She's a big slut. <laughs> Um, it's not, it might not be yours, you know, and it's a sweet little scene. It's right out of the book. Um, you know, Ian, again, is just conflicted. Like I should marry her. Um, I didn't really love her. Um, and Claire kind of, you know, is like, no, no, but he's. Claire's like, oh, Ian, you're so cute. <laughs> Ian is so cute. And he's so. But no, I mean, just the still. fact that, oh, Ian, you, you're you so like, you know, sincere and you think it was yours. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might have been, but yeah. Okay. So, so, so we have two months go by. At some point, Jamie goes to the Congress. Um, he comes back and he's telling Claire something that we told everybody last week. And, um, you know, Jamie is just now, maybe he watched last week's video. But he is like, all of, what do you write? All worthwhile business can, is conducted in the meeting house on the taverns. And we're like, yeah, Jamie, we said that last week. That the whole Revolutionary War took place in the taverns. Right. You know, so thank you for watching our videos, Jamie. Remember, um, remember, pay remember, Jamie, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Click the button. <laughs> Click the button. Click the button. Um, okay. But he was not chosen as a delegate because of the gossip um oh that was so sad i felt so bad for him i think that would have been hard for him though and like i really do want to know how this like i i, I would figure like at the new burn <laughs> meeting is are they really are they really getting delegates to the to the congress wouldn't that be like for, out of wilmington or uh like chapel hill or i don't know i don't know, I don't know. and i don't remember who ends up being the delegates out of North Carolina. I should know that. And they don't, I should, that's one of those things that I would like to memorize someday. Like everybody who was at the continent, there's there's three people per state per colony. I would like to memorize those names. Be kind of cool. (laughs) Carol's like, okay, you do that. You do that. I'm going to go to bed. You do that though. Okay. When the last scene though, we are back to you. Well, Claire's hair. Yes, we are. They're Claire coming out of church bit. and everybody being all. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the time, it's like a whole montage of like time is going by. Claire's well, I like to longer. discuss that. I find what? that, I find right, that what? interesting. Just the fact that everyone in town hates poor Claire. <clears throat> Claire well, like walks out of church and there's four ladies and she's like, hey, girl. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and they take off. But again, F. this is what I said. Like, and maybe it's like this in the book too. It probably is. But I felt like. All of a sudden, the only people on the ridge are the fisher folk. <clears throat> and they're going to hate her because they're, you know, programmed yeah. to do so by their, like, overlord leader, Tom Christie. Um, I, but, like, what about, you know, the McGilveries or... Um, oh, my God. I don't, know. I don't care. I don't even know all these people. What <laughs> all the other people, people. All the Tracy, other people. All the other people. I am still back with... I'm so upset that Jamie wasn't chosen because it was so very pole dark. <laughs> Poldark wasn't chosen either. <laughs> <laughs> well, Poldark did not live in the U.S. I mean, in, in the Americas. It's, you Poldark. guys, it's so funny, like, the things that Tracy and I pick out of these scenes. Like, oh, my God, I'm so Alexis right now. Um, <laughs> and, and and you're, like, talking about, like, this, that. And I'm like, Claire has a really, like, 20s haircut, chic 20s haircut. And look at the leaded glass on, on the doors. <laughs> I thought maybe that was one of the things that you could not import out of Britain anymore. It was, like, glass or, like, um, lumber or whatever. But then again, you can make the lumber out. There's plenty of trees 
I don't America. know, but I had a boyfriend in high school who now does glass and leaded glass. Tracy, you should call him for your house. Oh my gosh. I Tracy, don't need leaded glass for my you house. You guys, Tracy's, how, what, what year was your house built? 1893. 1893. And since they moved in, they found like two different giant windows full of like stained glass. But so when I was seeing the picture, the um, doors, I was like, ooh, just like I want to discuss the gossiping. And you're like, yeah, no, we don't want to discuss that. <laughs> All right. Anyway. All right. Claire's in the Jardry, You know, this is this is like to your point, like this is the last part of the montage. Like she has no friends and she has no patience. She's she's, she's like in the surgery, like and she locks. I have nothing to do but doors. dust, but dust this the, my table here. So I'll yeah. dust my table. Um, she's got nothing to do. Then she hears like um, she hears like, oh, you got nothing to do, huh? Like everyone hates you, huh? And it's the Lionel Brown voice. <laughs> and she's like, and then she looks out the window, and here comes Malva. She's like, ah, what was Malva carrying? Anymore. I can't was take it anymore. Wait, was, this is left. Uh, was Malva is carrying like a pie? What was happening there? What was, <laughs> Malva was charging to the house. And I was like, what am I looking at right now? Um, so Claire's like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. And so she like puts her, you know, thing in, passes out. And then she has some easier dreams. And those are creepy. And Malva was creepy AF in them. Awful. And she's but just But they didn't like, really happen because when she's out on the ether, she is out on the ether. Um, she's like, you're up the devil, Claire. Um, everything. It's when she says everything that's yours will be mine. Um, and Claire pulls a knife and she's like, I kill you stay I away from that <laughs> i know i know somebody needs to pull a knife on malva you know it's really necessary um so claire wakes up and claire is totally okay so you know when you take a nap and like sometimes a nap is a really good thing but other times you wake up from a nap and you're just like you feel worse than you did when you went to sleep you're oh, like that, wait that's, where am i that's what? the thing what? tom always said you don't sleep more than 20 minutes during the nap because you're going to wake up feeling exhausted. You yeah. got to sleep for 10, 15 minutes and you are refreshed. And yeah. that's a fact. It, you, but it's like that after your nap where, yes, you slept too long. Maybe it's starting to get dark, you know, and you're just like, where am I? What am I? What time is it? What have I been doing? Right. I don't know. I don't understand. You're just all like flipped out. And so Claire was clearly bad napping. Okay. <laughs> so she's up. And she's kind of like, I don't know, where, what? So she goes outside with her garden basket. I, and she finally gets her shit together, takes her garden basket. She's just sort of standing there. She happens to look over here. Dun, dun, dun. dun. It's a dead Malva. Okay, before you, before you get to that point, I, am I cuckoo? I was watching this thing and I did have the ear things in. But it sounded to me like the house was, I heard lapping flames. What was that? I could hear birds. And I heard what sounded like flame. And then she sat up and went, and then she went outside and you could see smoke coming out of the chimney. But then it looked like the back of the house. It looked like there was smoke. And I'm like, oh my God, she's going to walk back here and the whole house is going to explode from the ether. And this is why, this is why Brie gave us all the schooling in the beginning of the season to let us know that the ether is going to blow up the house. But then next thing you know, she's like, and then she walked along and there was Malva dead in the, in the reeds. It's all about, about the bad nap. I'm telling you. That's yeah, I why. guess it is. I guess it is. It's bad nap time. Um, okay. Malva's dead again. Jessica Reynolds, you just had a brief run, a couple episodes, but oh, the things you did. You were awesome. fantastic. You were the best Malva I could ever have pictured. Oh, you 100%. were Malva, but I'm damn glad you're gone. I'm sorry. Yes, but you suck. <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> to Jessica see Reynolds, you. We love you. Else. Malva, you suck. So, yeah. so Malva's dead, but Claire realizes she's got a big old baby in her. Claire's like, and you know, Claire, Hold it. what? Hold it. What? You know, Claire, that's exactly right. So when you were talking about earlier about her asking Tom Christie for the poops and I was like, oh, well, this is it. I was livid. I am watching this and I'm freaking out. 
And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me that you are going to sit here and do this after everything you've been through. Do you not know? Leave her alone. Like, what the hell kind of whacked out Hippocratic oath did you take? I am sorry. Leave her alone. You're going to cut this baby out now? What do you think you're going to tell people? um, What would Tom say about all this? If it's not about Claire, (laughs) it ain't there. I mean, weren't you sitting there like, Claire, don't touch it. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. They are. They're going to already think you did it. She's in front of your house. You hate her. Jamie's gone. They're going to think you did it. Now you cut the baby out of her womb. She had a bad nap. Bad naps. That's a will really do. bad nap. That's the worst nap I've ever heard in my life. Bad naps will make you she do bad things. She slept for two hours. Bad naps will make you do bad things. They scramble Holy, your brain. She your took that. Your decision making that, suffers. My girl took that oath a little too seriously. I am sorry. You do not sit there and pull that baby out. And oh my God, it was awful. She doesn't know how long Malva's even been dead. Like, have you not seen Malva's blue lips? Even I knew Malva was dead for a little while. (laughs) I just, yeah. I mean, Malva, like. Tracy, it's because Claire's nap was so damn long. She was dead for a long time. (laughs) I just, you know, maybe Claire knows more than we do about like how long a baby in the womb can survive after the mother. She does. She does. That's why she tried. Well, she felt, you know, and then she tried to do. I was like, Ooh, she did the, <laughs> you know, with a baby, you're supposed to put your mouth over their nose and their oh, mouth. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 But, uh, oh, my goodness. And that's it. That Here's is. my question. Do you think that Malva only started um, <clears throat> sleeping around after Claire had that, after they had that little chit-chat and, and she asked if people like it, if women like it? No. That's a good question. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe she started taking charge a little more. Um, all right. Anyway. All right. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, this was a fantastic episode. Season six. Okay. Let me ask you this. Season six. Better than season one? Best okay. Let me let, let me rephrase the question. Yeah, you've got to rephrase that. Season six, best episode of out best best season of Outlander so far. Season no. What are you talking about? This season of Outlander. You think this season is better than season? I didn't one? say that. I asked a question. No, not at all. Why? Not at all. I'm always going to pick Scotland. Well, I shouldn't say that. For now, I'm always going to pick Scotland. We'll see what's coming down the pike. I think that uh, season one is always going to be the best episode, or the best season, because it was new and we didn't know if they were going to be able to pull it off. And they did. And they did it really well. And we learned about all the characters and got to know them. And everybody was really great. And it did have Scottish, more, more of a Scottish influence, which was great. But this season is like, this is the bookiest season. As this is this, I don't know that this is the bookiest season because I think season one could be up there too. Although he didn't say, fetch me a clean shirt and take the lassie off my chest. There but, were several things in season one to me that went against that were fundamentally the antithesis of the characters. Oh, all right. A couple of things, a couple of things. Okay. Right. Won't go well, we'll talk about there, that but. in another video. But we could talk about that during Droughtland or right. we nothing else. Right. I mean, about. I still, yeah. Season one, season one, you know, you never forget your first season. Um. <laughs> season. <laughs> and it was the bright, shiny toy thing that we all wanted. Oh, Tracy, so, you're forgetting the most important part. It was the what? wedding. <laughs> it was the wedding. Go the back wedding and look at my favorite thing of season one. Go- wasn't mine either but it was apparently a lot of people's go back and look at our videos i think the wedding might be our number one had the high i think we might have had the highest viewership in the wedding oh oh, yeah 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 Yeah, Um, people love that people loved the wedding you did have a really good villain in blackjack Mm. 
I miss uh, Tobias a lot. I know. I know. But this season's really great. The season is just hitting it on all fronts and they're sticking to the book and um, I'm loving it. I'm here for it. And we have two more episodes left, Carol. Can I you, can't uh, even believe it. I can't even believe yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So, okay. Speaking of two more episodes left. So next week is Easter weekend and they're taking a break. There's no Outlander next weekend. <gasps> And we're taking a break. <laughs> and, we, and we're taking a break. We're going to have Easter. Believe it um, And we're going to need it. Why, Tracy? Why are we going to need the break? We're going to need the break because the next weekend, which is the, I can't believe it's the penultimate episode next week. The next episode that we see is going to be the penulti- penul- penultimate episode of season six. And we will be in Scotland. Okay. So, now you need to tell me what that word is you're using and what does it mean? Penultimate is second to last. <laughs> ultimate is the last penultimate is the second to last okay you felt the need to use that word i use it all the time i say penultimate all the time when it comes to these episodes it's like game of thrones always you could always know in game of thrones the penultimate episode was the one where like a million people got killed like the I, red believe the, I believe the red wedding is the penultimate episode of season two All right. The bottom line is what my point was going to be, you guys, is that we are kind of lucky to not have an episode next week. Not we meaning you guys and us, but us, because we are headed to Scotland the following week for the Mop Goes to Scotland 2022 tour. So we're very excited, but uh, I am currently obsessing over outerwear and shoes (laughs) So, um, I, it's going to be like, really, it's just hard to like try and pinpoint what the weather's going to be actually doing. You know, the big joke about Scotland is that it rains and snows and is sunny and everything mixed up. Don't like this weather in 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 one five minutes, you'll get, you'll get a different kind. Yeah. In one day. So it's really hard when you're like trying to shove everything into your suitcase and not go over your 50 pounds. And, um, you know, when you're worried about, oh my God, do I need a fleece line parka? Or do I need a lightweight little jacket? So anyway, that is what we will be doing when we're off next week. And then, uh, and then the counts. penultimate. The penultimate is going to be the first time we're there. We will get something together for you. Um, we will get some sort of recap um, for that episode. On the plane. Tracy and I might be, uh, we might be able to watch. We should just watch it on the plane together. And do that. I think that would be so much fun. We will totally do one of these. Together. We're gonna be sleep. It's a red eye, Carol. We're gonna be sleeping on the plane. Yeah, but we're gonna have lots of time to wait in the airport beforehand. So we'll yes. do it in the airport. Well, we will have already watched it once. So we, may, you may get, you may get a, a recap from Heathrow. Uh, you, but you'll get something. You'll get something. Um, oh, I'm gonna have to take time the day before and watch it. Holy cow! I'm gonna I be know. A psycho. I know. I know. Gonna we're we're, we're going to figure it out. You will get it. We will figure out how to get it to you. But you will get a recap of that episode. You might get some surprises too. Just saying, you might get you might get an extra bonus surprise uh, show. We'll see what we can do. The last episode, the season finale, is literally happening when we are on the plane. Well, no, I'm sorry, it's not. It's happening like as soon as we walk in the door. As soon as you walk in the door, basically. Actually, you're closer than me, so I don't know if I'll make it, but you will. I might. So make, I, I'll be lucky if I make it for like half. I honestly can't promise that we're going to have a timely recap up for that. Sorry, I almost knocked my thing down. Um, for that for that episode. Yeah, we will have something to you just as soon as we can. Maybe it be a couple of days afterwards. Um, we'll see how it all pans out because I can't promise that we're going to be able to really have time during the week we're in Scotland to watch the last episode and watch it a couple of times and take notes and talk about it. Da, 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 da. So that, so you're going to have to wait po- probably for our words on that, but no worries. We will get them to you. And for those of you who like to live tweet with us, that's probably not going to happen for um the last two episodes just because we're gonna be in scotland and it's gonna be hard to coordinate that but we will be live tweeting this episode again you will have already seen it by the time you're watching this so i hope you had a good time live tweeting with us um you know so we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants here but we'll make it work it's gonna be super fun 
We're going to keep you guys posted on what we're doing um, in Scotland. So make sure to subscribe on YouTube, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. We're really going to try to like up the Instagram game on uh, in Scotland. Um, follow us on Twitter, follow us on TikTok. Um, and, you know, come with us vicariously. Yeah, absolutely. We'll put you all in our pockets and bring yeah, you along. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have plenty of stuff going on while we're there. So yeah, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's all. Carol, anything else? No. Okay. So I guess the next time we see you guys, we'll be in Scotland. Or maybe at least at, at the airport. Like it'll be interesting. It, yeah, this is gonna be the last. Oh, I guess it won't be the last time they see these backgrounds for the season because we'll do the finale probably with these backgrounds. But next time's gonna be. <laughs> What was that? A little magnet. My friend Eileen got me and I forgot all about it. It was on the uh, um the next time you see us, we are gonna be in a different country. Uh, all right, you guys. A different Have country, a good- the country we're all talking about, the country that got all this started. That's where we're gonna be. Uh-huh. In Scotland. Scotland. We're, gonna, we're going to be in Scotland. Um, I can't really do the accent. But, oh. And you know why? Because if it's not Scottish, it's crap. It's crap. <laughs> all right you guys have a great week happy easter for those of you who celebrate happy passover i'm not sure when it is but um but uh uh happy uh, all of it. top to those who celebrate that and um we will see you guys in a couple weeks have a good one bye, bye.